good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic Mod and Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have my top 10 WWE action figures of the year. And as you guys can see, we have a plethora of figures in front of your screen right now. And these are not on my top 10. This is all of my honorable mentions. And there were so many damn good figures this year, man. It's kind of impossible to compile a 10-figure list. Like, it literally took me a while to come up with this list, you know, just kind of switch it back and forth. This one higher than that one. This one over that one. And it took me a while to come up with this top 10, but I think I finally got my final countdown. I think I'm satisfied and happy with what we got going right here. So I think this should be a pretty good video for you guys. As you guys can see, we have tons of great figures right here. You're probably mind blown. You're probably like, how the hell is that figure left off as, as for sure? I'm going to run through these figures real quick just to, to point out some of their good qualities. But 2020, while it was an absolute shit year, it was the best year in terms of WWE action figures and collecting them. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you are like, oh my God, Ultimate Edition Fiend. How the hell do you not have this in your top 10? Well, I think, first of all, guys, I think that the Elite figure kind of watered down the Ultimate. Like, we already got the Elite, so the hype for the Fiend kind of died down a little bit. I think that had something to do with it. I love the interchangeable head sculpt. I love the double-jointed arms and everything. But I think, overall, the stumpy, dumpy legs kind of uh, deducted a lot of points for me. Like, the formula they used didn't make it as grand and as immaculate as it could have been. China's figures were amazing this year. They were really close to making the top 10. I don't know how they didn't make it on there. I was really impressed with both of them. I love their heads. I love their attire. This figure in particular, the WrestleMania one, is an absolute beast. The two Undertaker figures were great this year, Elite 79 and the Decade of Domination figure. The Decade of Dominance figure was almost on the top 10. Great head sculpt. You got the tie. You got the interchangeable, or you got the cloth jacket. Ultimate Edition Cena, he's my GOAT, but the only reason he didn't make the top 10 is his legs and this, this ankle articulation stuff that they still haven't fixed. How stiff his legs are. He just doesn't have the poseability I would really like out of an Ultimate Edition. The Rock was super close. Ivar was super amazing this year. Seth Rollins, Ultimate Edition HBK, his head sculpts weren't good enough. They were very off. Walter was a really good figure. Don't forget, I got Stunning Steve over here. John Morrison in the back. I mean, there, this year was absolutely incredible, guys, but this is not my top 10. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into my top 10 WWE action figures of 2020. So coming in at the number 10 spot, it is going to be the two-pack of Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe. So this is the WrestleMania 35 two-pack. This figure is just too insane for me. Again, I thought this figure came out in 2019, but upon further investigation, it did come out at the beginning of 2020, and this one is just too insane, man. This this Mysterio, Rey Mysterio, the only reason it's not higher in my top 10 is because the head sculpt is clearly too big. Like, if you zoom out, you can kind of tell how big his damn head is, but this figure is so freaking crazy the attire, the golds, the print, and everything going on. And Rey Mysterio's figures can pose around with anybody in the country. So that is the reason that Rey Mysterio comes in at number 10. This is a fantastic figure. And Mattel outdid themselves with this. I think this is so good. If you don't own this, guys, you need to track it down. Coming in at number 9, guys, we are going with Io Shirai. This figure is phenomenal. Like, one of those figures that you get and you're just like, damn, that feels good in the hand, if you get what I'm saying. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Any figure that feels as good in the hand as this one does is a damn good figure. It's a great head sculpt. Not only did we get this figure in all its, all its great qualities, but you also have to include the beautiful cloth jacket with the fur on the inside of the jacket. What a phenomenal jacket. A great head sculpt. A great figure. Very good posability, great attire. I mean, just overall, it's just one of those figures you just want to sit here and pose around all day and just kick everyone's ass with. Not as much ass as Ultimate Edition Ronda Rousey, but this figure still is phenomenal, and Io Shirai had to come in at the number nine spot. Coming in at number 8, guys, we are going with Otis. Elite 76 Otis. Who would have freaking thought, man? I'm pretty sure when we ranked Elite 76, Otis came in at the number 1 spot, if I'm not mistaken. This guy just blew my mind. As soon as I got him out of the packaging and started posing him around, I knew that he would probably end up in our top 10 countdown of the year. And just the way he can pose around, I love the way they did this. Obviously, he doesn't get the best ab crunch, but the way he can move around, the way he feels in the hand, he can do all the things you need. He's just super mobile for his size, and I I like all the technology they got going on with this guy. I love the boots. I love how they did the sculpted over knee pads so that you don't have to worry about the articulation being hindered. Just some really smart choices as far as Mattel is concerned, and I like everything going on with this figure. So Otis, as well as his phenomenal head scan, is going to come in at the number 8 ranking. 
Coming in at the number seven spot, guys, is going to be Mr. T. Now, the Mr. T San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. I love this figure. I think the accessories are nice. I just can't even believe we got a Mr. T. Just having a Mr. T itself is going to put itself in the top ten. I did like this one more than the boxing one, just simply because this is our standard Mr. T in wrestling gear. Of course, the two-pack one is nice with the robe and the boxing gloves and all of that stuff, but I still like this one more, and I, I like everything going on with it. the accessories, the attire. And just the simple fact that we got a Mr. T, man. I mean, this is great. I think this was at the top of my WWE Elites of the Year so far, I'm pretty sure. It was like my favorite figure coming into the midway point when we were ranking our WWE figures. But Mr. T does come in at number seven, and this is a really good figure, guys. I highly recommend you get this in your collection. It's just one of those that's just such a beautiful piece, and I'm happy to have it. All right, guys, we're getting into the nitty-gritty now. We're up into number six. Number six is going to be Elite 82 Keith Lee. Bask in the glory of Keith Lee. This figure is just simply great. I mean, it, it's just one of those figures that feels so good in the hand, if you know what I'm talking about. If, you, if you're if you a mock collector, you don't know because you don't. You got to pull it out of the packaging and just feel it in the hand. It just feels like it's going to kick some ass. I don't know what to say. It's just that good. It's Keith Lee. The head sculpt's great. It feels super good in the hand. I love that they gave us a new torso mold. I like the formula. The formula is borderline perfect. If it's not perfect, I need the Chase variant version. Hopefully, I will get that very soon, but I want to use that Chase variant version, and I want to get this man in the ring because he is so phenomenal, and this figure just captures everything about it. So, Keith Lee comes in at number six. All right, guys, top five now. We're getting into the top five. Things are getting scary. Coming in at number five is going to be Elite Bianca Belair. There ain't no damn way this figure could have went lower anymore, Brad. It almost climbed higher in the countdown. This figure is the best female figure of the year, hands down, bar none. The Charlotte Ultimate Edition boots look really good on this figure, how they have, like, the skinniness to them. They have ankle pivot. You got the toe pivot right there, boot rotation, double-jointed knees. Not only that, guys, it's Bianca Belair. I was super, super excited for the figure because I love her as a talent. I think she's super good. You have a great head sculpt right here. The only thing that really deducted football points really is just no bendy wire in the hair. That would have been really good to see. She does get her glasses. She has this phenomenal pink and white jacket to go with her beautiful pink and white gear that I love. I love this pink and white gear. It's a great attire. The boots are great. This was easily the best figure out of the set she came with. I think it was Elite 81. And this is just one of those figures that you gotta track down. This is my female figure of the year. And another thing I wanted to mention is Ultimate Edition Becky Lynch would have been probably in this top 10 and she probably would be in this spot but her head sculpts were terrible her head sculpts were absolutely terrible it really eliminated her from contention and it really ruined the figure for me because you got to do a head swap to make that figure good but once you do the head swap the Becky Lynch is one of the best figures of the year as well but Bianca Belair is here and she totally deserves it this figure is phenomenal and you need to track it down Coming in at number four, guys, it is going to be the Ultimate Edition Hollywood Hulk Hogan. This figure, I mean, do, what, do we need to even say anything, Brad? Do we even need to say anything? NWO Hollywood Hulk Hogan, phenomenal head sculpts, Hollywood t-shirt ripping there. Got the weight belt, got the beautiful Hollywood attire, the Hollywood boots. I mean, this thing, the articulation on this guy is phenomenal as well. Anything with double jointed arms is automatically going to be kicking some ass. And I just wait and dream for the day that we get double jointed arms on every figure. If if that ever happens, Brad, we're going to be in some serious trouble because all my money will be gone. But this Ultimate Edition Hollywood Hulk Hogan is uh, just unrelenting. We waited on it for absolutely forever. It was like five years we had to wait on this thing. It was totally worth the wait once we finally got it. I'm very excited to see what the next Ultimate Edition Hulk Hogan is, and this figure is just super nice. Of course, it's got some detail problems, like the knee pads aren't all the way accurate. They could have done some other things with it. The glasses don't fit the head sculpt as good as they should. But this is some of Mattel's best work of the year, bar or none, and I'm super happy to finally have a Hollywood Hulk Hogan. I'm sure if I can, I'll get some more, but I don't know how hard that's going to be, but I'll, I'll definitely do my best to get some more because I want to do some fix-ups with it, but Hollywood Hulk Hogan had to come in at number four, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be on like everyone's list this year, probably at the top. 
All right, guys, top three. Let's get into it. Coming in at number three is going to be Legends Eddie Guerrero. Now, this one is so high on the list because it came out of absolute nowhere. Nobody really expected to get a, a Legends Eddie Guerrero in this kind of attire. It had the I'm Your Poppy cloth t-shirt. I have switched the arms, but that's not the biggest deal. It's not nothing. Uh, it's a great-looking attire, great-looking head sculpt. Like, the likeness to Eddie is, is just phenomenal on this figure. It just sends me back into the nostalgia feels. I feel like I'm in 2004 right now, just looking at this figure, and it's just, it's so good, man. It's an upgrade from his previous Elite, even though the previous Elite probably had the better attire, but this figure is just so good, man. I mean, it just captures the legend of Latino Heat. It just, it's so good. When you look at this up on the shelf, it just makes you happy, and I had to put this up here. We knew it once we got it. We knew that it would be high in the top 10 for a lot of people, and so uh, anytime we get Ruthless Aggression Era Elites, man, it's, it's going to be hard not to include it way up on the top 10. So, Eddie Guerrero makes his presence known at number three. All right, guys, coming in at number two, let's get into it. Coming in at number two in the ranking is going to be Ultimate Edition Brock Lesnar. Now, what's absolutely phenomenal to me is when I ranked my favorite figure at the midway point of the year, I was thinking to myself, like, I don't know why. I feel like I didn't know this figure released this year, but I guess it totally did, and it's one of the best of the year. It's absolutely one of the best of the year. I think this is one of my favorite Ultimate Editions. This and Ronda Rousey are right at the top for me. I just love how seamless it looks. I think that's one of my big things about it. Like, you look at it, you can't even see where the ab cuts off, which I think was a beautiful design choice by Mattel. I love the double-jointed arms because it is Ultimate Edition. I love the accessories we get, the interchangeable head sculpts and everything, and it's just such a fun figure to pose around. Like, I just want to beat the shit out of everyone. Like, bring it. Bish. You want a piece of me? So yeah, this this figure just makes me extremely happy to pose around. It, I find myself constantly just grabbing this figure and posing it around, and that that right there is telling in itself. And I, I do that a lot with Ronda Rousey as well. It's just one of those figures that feels phenomenal in the hand. It's super fun to pose around with, and it, it's just it's just great. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think you can make a beautiful looking street gear Brock Lesnar out of this, and it's just it's definitely one of my favorite figures of the year. So it's so damn good, man. If you own it, you know. If if you have a chance to get this, definitely track it down. And coming in at number one, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be none other than Elite 82 Finn Balor. Now, we knew when we saw the proto images how damn good it could be. And just like last year, Brad, an Elite Finn Balor does take the cake in this countdown ranking. As you guys know, I'm going to take his jacket off because he didn't even come with the jacket, which probably would have made it definitely figure of the year. He didn't come with the NXT title as well, but he did come with a cloth Balor Club t-shirt. On top of that, guys, I just love that they went with the rip up torso. I love the updated NXT look with the X attire and the all black, the black sleeve. He's got his updated tattoos. I love all the black here. I love that they included the detail on the shoe. That was absolutely amazing to include that. They absolutely could have skipped over it. They gave him the lower legs in black to complete the look there. Got the clean deco on the back. And I think what really sells this figure and what made me like have to rank it at the number one, first of all, has to be the shooter hands. Giving us shooter hands was absolutely huge. I did not think we would ever get that from Mattel, so giving us the shooter hands makes this figure over the top. And then the head sculpt. I have been waiting on a Finn Balor with this kind of beard for years and years. I've said it in videos like multiple times. You got the thick, beautiful beard coming down in a fade right there. Great looking hair. Great looking head sculpt. He's a pissed off Finn Balor. We've been waiting on that forever. At least I have been waiting on that forever, which is why for me personally, it is the figure of the year. You guys know that Finn Balor is one of my favorite talents in all of wrestling in the entire world, so I could not leave him out of the number one spot, but it was super close, man. It was so close. I almost had Brock Lesnar take it over, so that will make back-to-back -back years that Finn Balor has taken the number one spot. Last year, my 2019 ranking, Elite 74 Finn Balor in the red gear from the Royal Rumble, who took on Brock Lesnar, interestingly enough, was the number one figure of the year, so now Finn Balor back-to-back -back years has taken the figure of the year, at least for me, but before we get out of here, guys, let's go ahead and run through the top ten and get it in our comment shout-out, so 
Finn Balor number one, Brock number two, Guerrero number three, Hogan number four, Belair number five, Keith Lee number six, Mr. T number seven, Otis number eight, EO number nine, and Ray number ten. What a phenomenal year of figures, man. I mean, there's nothing else I could possibly say. Mattel crushed it this year with figures, and there's no buts about it, man. They, they literally killed it this year. But before we get out of here, guys, let's get into our random shout-out. So this comment is going to go to the college, the, 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 the Colonius? The Colonius one. He says, I'm so glad Cedric is finally getting a push. Hopefully he wins tag gold and then challenges Lashley for the U.S. title. This man can do it all. And he is correct, Brad. I totally agree with you. I think that'd be absolutely phenomenal to see him ascend in the tag team ranks, win the Raw tag team titles with Shelton Benjamin, use those for a while, get kicked out of the group or something, turn on Lashley, whatever the case, win the U.S. championship, propel himself, and get into that main event picture. He is one of my favorite talents, so seeing Cedric get all that would be absolutely phenomenal, but huge shout out to the Colonian... Shout out to the Colonius for that comment right there, dude. Shout out to you. That is going to do for my top 10 WWE action figures of the year, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the countdown. Let me know what you think of it down in the comment section below. What are your top 10 figures? What's your favorite figure of the year? Let me know down below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. You crossed the line. I've been